What's going on, everyone? You know, I got So and So in Stereo podcast is back. Kyle, back on the mic with Ed and Tom. Welcome back to the show. And I know you got some stuff to say because you've been gone for a week, but I'm going to put you on the spot for a little R&B trivia. Are you ready? Already? Jeez. Go yeah, listen, we're Actually, this isn't even an r and this isn't even an R&B trivia. This is urban music trivia. So if you can name a song by the following three artists, I will let you take the stage to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Are you ready? Oh, God, I'm scared. So name one song by either Cardi B, Little Uzi Vert, or Wale, and I'll let you take the stage. Oh, God, Wale is a cheat. Wale? <laughs> I could name like half of his discography. Exactly. It's sad that he can, but gosh. All right. The first two, I don't know. I can't name anything. I'm sorry. Sadly, I can, but I guess I'm supposed to. Yeah, yeah. How long are you going to keep using right. that excuse? <laughs> What's the Wally song, man? Matrimony? And there you go. All right, it's all yours. I'm done with my intro. <laughs> I'm going to put you guys on the spot now. You ready for okay. this? Okay. Who is the most underrated artist of this podcast? I'm talking about someone we never talk about that's, like, probably one of the best artists. I got mine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start huh. with mine. I'm going to so You know how people complain in the comments? They're like, you guys never talk about such and such. Right. Well, I got mine. It's Kenny Lattimore. I feel like we never talk about that guy, and he's been pretty successful. I agree with you there. Yep. <laughs> and he you consistently got... puts out, and he's just not just underrated by us. He's underrated in general, because I can't think of a bad Kenny Lattimore album. And even the album that dropped a couple years ago, I think, like that album was pretty great, and it got very little traction. And most importantly... He's a nice guy. Whenever I've seen him, he's been smiling. So you know that counts for something. Ken is my dude. Uh, so any can Kenny Lattimore more love, I am all down for. It. Who you got? Uh, see, it's hard Ooh. to judge by. It depends on how we say underrated, because I don't feel like. We talk enough about how great Marsha Ambrosius is, but then there's also some other artists like Atidra Moses, and I feel like she'll always be on our lips, but, you know, she's just so sporadic with her releases. Maybe that's why we don't talk about her as much, because she drops out once enough. every 10 years. So it's hard to really say. I think Marsha might be kind of my pick for someone that's who a good one. still – Still pretty visible, but we need to show more love. Marsh is another one that nine times out of ten, I'm going to give her albums like four and four and a half stars, but we just don't talk about her because she comes in, she drops her hot music, and she lays low for a minute. It's a good one. For me, I would say the underrated artist that we don't talk about enough is Brandy. Now, just oh, to go back oh. to the last... <laughs> oh. Now, just to go... Tom, you weren't here for last week's episode, but we went through Ed's top albums of the 2000s, and he did not put a Brandy album in there. Are you kidding me? Ed? Uh, first of all, we already went over this. There was a Brandy album in there. However, it got knocked off the list because I left off another album that needed inclusion. So if you want to be technical, Brandy was number 31 on the list. What I had beef with is everybody trying to say that Full Moon deserved to be in the top five. And I'm like, which version of Full Moon did you hear? Because that album is fine. But top five of the decade? Play a stop. Listen, I don't know what happened on the last podcast. I haven't listened yet, but I saw the comments. And, man, not one person seemed to agree with your list then. I haven't seen the comments yet, but I guess all the comments were wrong. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> uh, okay. But on the real, on the real, I guess I would say uh, Shantae Moore is someone that we don't talk about enough on this podcast. She's a great singer. Ironically, was married to Kenny Lattimore. And so we don't touch on that. Up. We don't touch on that couple enough, I guess. 
Yeah. Well, they don't touch on each other at all anymore since they are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Shout all out right. to Kenny. He's still my dude. All right. So, uh, before we get started on uh, all the new music that's coming out, I was just talking about this with Tom yesterday, and I need your input on this because I was actually going on YouTube, or I went on YouTube yesterday and found an old Day 26 song from like 2008. It's an unreleased song, and as I was listening to it, it has all the elements of a song that I would have loved back in 2008, but as I listened to it today in 2017, It doesn't move me anymore. So there's a couple of possibilities here. Number one, the song is is just not that great. Number two, my tastes have evolved over time. And number three, it might be time for me to start listening to Anthony Hamilton. Number three. I think number three is perfect. But, I mean, that's actually a good representation of how our tastes change with R&B, and tie it back to the list that we talked about last week. I think a lot of people who I talked to on the soul and stereo side who were talking about, oh, this album was left out and that album was left out, were albums that they loved from that their childhood and that era. But if you go back and listen to them, they're fine albums. But as you grow and mature, your tastes change, and you realize that that's okay but it's not that great. When you're a kid, you think SpaghettiOs is the greatest meal of all time. But when you're grown, I'm going to need you to know better about your SpaghettiOs and your R&B. So maybe that Day 26 song was hot garbage. Maybe it was okay, and you recognize now that it was just okay, which is probably what I'm guessing happened here. Y'all go back and actually listen to Full Moon and tell me how good it is in 2017. (laughs) I'll leave that up to the readers. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I just warn you, Kyle? If you're going to listen to Anthony Hamilton, you better be prepared to be in a certain mood because it kind of, it's kind of, uh, you know, I used to listen to Anthony Hamilton when I was kind of depressed. It's kind of like down-tempo, kind of. It's not for every mood. Let's just put it that way. And if you are in a different mood, old Anthony will put you in the depressed mood. In a good way. <laughs> But he will bring you down, especially that first album when he starts talking oh, yeah. about Lucille and Charlene. Woo. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, I'm just going to stick to what everyone else is listening to these days. Julius Caesar. Everyone seems to oh, love him. My. So. <laughs> uh, my last podcast, I voted and had an executive decision to sit this man on the corner and turn his mic off for talking about Julius Caesar <laughs> and not Dan. <laughs> Wow. Well, well, anyway, uh, on to more serious matters. Some new music came out from our favorite R&B artists. Um, I want to start off first with Kay Michelle. She put out a new song, Birthday. Now, Tom, you just, you just got a chance to listen to it moments prior to the podcast, so I'll let you take the first stab at this. What are your thoughts? Here's my analysis. <clears throat> it seemed pretty clear that the label was trying to aim for urban radio, the younger audience, but crafting a song that was still kind of Kate Michelle and not too trendy. So it, it, it almost seems very strategic because that's not a mm. song you've ever heard Kate Michelle doing so far, in my opinion. So you can tell they're trying to gain that younger, you know, audience still. But, I mean, from what I just heard, it didn't seem like straight-up turn-up music. You know, at least it was a little... I don't know. I'll listen again. What do you think, Kyle? Um, I kind of feel the same way. It's, um, I mean, ironically, or coincidentally, actually, she's on the same label as Tank, who we'll talk about later on this podcast, but they're kind of both going towards that same type of sound where it's sort of trendy with the trap drums, um, but it's still, I guess, R&B in a way. Um it's, I, I'm thinking it will probably do okay on urban radio because she does have a following there. But in the long run, obviously, songs like VSOP, those are the songs that's going to keep her on the charts and continually touring. So it'll be interesting to see what the rest of the album sounds like. I know there was another song that came out uh, last week featuring Ed's cousin, Chris Brown, and that sort oh, of uh, fits the same vibe as this birthday song. It's sort of turn-up-y, but not all the way turn-up. 
So we'll see what happens. I'm interested because the label has really, you know, had a huge part in K. Michelle's music career right now. I know the last album she wanted to go country, and she wasn't able to do that because of the label. So who knows what's going to happen this time around. Interesting. I haven't heard the song yet, but the description is very weird for K. Michelle, but... You know, as I've talked about before, I'm not too mad at people incorporating trap drums as long as they can continue to keep their R&B sensibilities about them. And it sounds like that's what she's doing here, so I'm not mad at that. It's only when the R&B singers all start trying to sound like Uzi Vert that I get beat. So it doesn't sound like that's the case, so maybe this will work. You want want to hear something interesting, guys? I was just um, trying to look up how old she was. You know, so I could see what her timeline is in terms of what type of music she could do. I'm on Wikipedia. It's not in the main section, her age, but then there's speculation. Michelle, Michelle's age was reported in her college yearbook as 18 in late 2000, which would put her birth year at 1982. Yeah, That's all they have. So. so there's only speculation. So she's like 35, I guess. She'd probably be, well, it depends on her birthday, but probably 36 or so. So she's like around yeah. my age. Okay. Got it. I thought she was younger. I thought she was like 31. I did too. I thought she was just 30. So that's a little surprising. I think they're probably trying to make everyone think that too by hiding it a bit, to be honest. That's probably why yeah. it's buried on her page. Yeah. But good news, guys. If K. Michelle is allowed to turn up at 35, so are you guys. So it's all good. <laughs> I am. Look, play let me tell you, I turn down at my age. There's no turning up. Listen, <laughs> if, as long as Tank continues to do it, I'm going to be doing it too. Oh, my gosh. You and Tank can do it. <laughs> um, some other music news that I want to get into. Everyone's favorite sisters, the Braxtons, Tamar and Tony, are set to put out albums. Uh, Tamar just announced her album title. The album's actually coming out September 29th. Uh, let me read this title because it's a little ridiculous. And, Ed, I know you'll oh, love this title. Oh, you don't say. Bluebird of Happiness. That is the title of Tamar Braxton's album. And the album cover has her with, like, angel wings, and she's, like, painted blue. Um, I don't really know what's going on there, but guys, <laughs> I saw I mean, the hey, X Men looking cover where she's blue with the wings going on, and I know that. And I'm this is the time of the podcast where I say send your tweets to E. T. Bowser and not bother these guys. And I can say that Tamar is a fantastic vocalist. Well, I'll say she's a great vocalist. I won't say fantastic because she has to learn how to control her vocals sometimes. Because you don't. But she does the most. Oh, my goodness. Can you just cut out some good music and not do weird stuff? Like dress like flying Smurfs on your album cover. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, man. I will say this, though. This is Tamar's fourth album. People really only know her for her last two. But... As a whole, as an R&B artist, I have to respect what she's been doing the last couple of years. She's been putting out some solid albums. I know you guys might think it's a little sleepy time, but I think it's been pretty good. I'm I'm actually really proud of Tamar. Well, how is the single doing? Sorry, Ed, but how is the single doing, Kyle? I think it's it's like top five on Urban AC, from what I remember. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, well, she's doing good. Not bad. Yeah, and uh, and again, I have no most of my annoyance with Tamar is from the Tay Martians and not her. But uh, she is a very good artist that I still feel like should and could be a little bit better. But I just get annoyed when we kind of exalt her a little higher than her pay grade. Like, well, let her work up to that. She's getting there. She's good. She's one of the better voices. Her albums are hit and miss to me. Like they always have good songs and always have some suspect stuff but she's a very solid artist who definitely deserves her spot and she is helping to keep that that part of r&b alive so good for her she gets props but i ain't throwing her up in the top 10 of all time singers blah 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 sorry twitter (laughs) well there's only one feature on her album and and that is with yo Gotti. so take that for what it is 
No, and this is on uh, take it. <laughs> this is on E one, so it'll be interesting to see how it works out. Yep. And as we were talking about the Braxtons earlier, Tony Braxton is set to put out a new album. Her album title, Sex and Cigarettes. <laughs> now coming off the album with Babyface, which I thought was a very strong Urban AC album. Actually, Ed, you got some props on our website for um, that album review because somebody dug back into our website, read the album review, decided to listen to the album, and they were like, this is a really, really great album. Thank you. You know, I got so and so in Well, stereo. I am happy to always share when the music is hot, and I thought that album was vastly underrated for the year it came out. Great album. So... Sex and Cigarettes, this is the new album. I believe she has a single coming out relatively soon. What are we expecting from Tony Braxton this time around? Hmm. I think with Tony, if you look at her track record, she's always been pretty consistent. Now, she'll always have a couple songs that kind of, um, so to speak, speak to the climate. Like I remember in the A. Marie era, she kind of had the – the one song that was kind of like the go-go beat, the kind of DC influence joint, that was fine. But I think for the most part, you'll get another Tony Braxton album. You might get one kind of traffic song, but I don't think it'll be anything ridiculous or out of the ordinary. Tony is another artist to me that consistently delivers. Even her worst album is still pretty okay. So I look forward to it. Is she writing music at this stage of her career or no? Uh, as far as I know, she wasn't, but I guess we'll have to see. Her last album, of course, Babyface did that. Yeah. Listen, so we'll have to see. I yeah. mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking that as long as she picks the right writers and producers, I think she'll be fine. But, you know, I think th- that has a big factor. Obviously, if someone's only a singer, it, you know, it, it really has a big impact who they work with, you know. So we'll see who she decides to go with. Yep. Now, I want to get into some new music really quickly. This, these songs came out earlier in the week. Um, Miguel put out another song, Shock and All, which definitely shocked me. Sort of sounds like an NERD song. Uh, yeah, a bit. Man, where, did that, where I, did that come from? I don't know. And I don't know. You guys seem to be a little bit more positive about this joint than I did. It sounded to me, as I was saying before we got on the podcast, like, Bargain Basement Timberland, sort of 2008. It's like a very sad love. Oh, not. I'm talking about the album. Sexy Back, not Love Stone. A very poor Sexy Back knockoff. It's just. I see what he was trying to do with it, but it's too screamy and too tinny. It just does not sit well in my ears. And I do get the NERD comparisons, but I don't know. Y'all might have to have this one. Let me stick with the Skywalker song. I'll be, I just uh, I was interested to see that he just released another single right after that Skywalker song. Like he didn't even let that one breathe really, and came back with nope. another. So I'm, I'm interested to see what what his uh, plan is here. Yeah, and I'm interested Tom, in what, what the he's... project sounds like. If we're getting yeah. music kind of like all over the place like this, right? Good news, Tom. You might be hearing Skywalker on Air, Urban AC. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll have to see. I mean, I, I don't know. Yep. Um, Mary J. Blige is set to release a new single, so she has Set Me Free um, on this, uh, uh, right now out on radio. She's about to release a new single. Ed, are you ready for this single? Glow Which Up song? with DJ Khaled, Quavo, and Missy Elliott. Good Quavo. Lord. Now, I... <laughs> Quavo! No, no, Bo. So I was surprised it took her this long to get that song out, because when I first heard the album, I was like, oh. That's the next single because it's so trendy and so, I guess some people call it catchy. Even my wife likes that song, and she doesn't even really like that style of music. So it speaks to an audience, so I'm not surprised that Glow Up is going to be all up in our ears. I will have the radio turned off when that one pops. You know, whenever (laughs) there's decisions made, like on what single to put out or what direction to go, I always think about what the conversations are like in 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 the boardrooms at these labels. And I think some they're all sitting around the table, like, ready to choose the next single. And someone was like, hey, this guy Quavo is hot right now. He's got some songs on the radio. Let's go with that one right there. Glow up. And that's it. I, I mean, I guarantee, it out. <laughs> I guarantee you it's that simple. 
And Mike, can someone explain to me the appeal of the Quavo? Listen, guys, I, I got it. I was on the bus, right, riding home, and a, a girl, a younger girl in front of me, I looked at her cell phone. She was looking at it. Her background image on her cell phone, like the wallpaper, was a picture of Quavo. No joke. Wow. I only knew it was him, though, because it said Quavo under the guy's face. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. <laughs> I was going to be like, I would not know Quavo if he was standing in my house. I would just be like, weird man, get out of my house. I don't know what Quavo. I, don't, I couldn't pick any of the Migos out of any kind of lineup. Yeah. But, Jeez. yeah, I, I don't know. The auto-tune rapping and flash singing, it's just so weird how that's a thing. I don't know. That's going to be a thing for a while, I think. Um, Unfortunately. But, but if that's not your taste, Tom, I've got some more new music for you. Your boy Sam Smith, the king of blue-eyed soul, is back with a new oh, soul. The, the king, king of blue-eyed blue soul. soul. <laughs> that's you right. strike two against you, Kyle. <laughs> well, I didn't listen to the song, but I wanted to ask you guys, do you think he took too much time off? Did people forget about him at all, or are people waiting for him just like they were waiting for Adele? I think that his fan base is waiting for him. I mean, we technically aren't in his wheelhouse, although I do enjoy a couple of Sam Smith songs, I ain't going to lie. Ooh. I mean, the man can... He, you do? He's got a couple... Of, he's got a couple Ed, you're, of Ed, you're out. I'm sorry, you're out. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm out, but Julius Caesar fan over here and Quavo lover is still hanging around. Quavo! Anyway, he's got a couple joints. But my point is, I think that his fan ch- I mean, his fan base is strong enough that he can take a year or so off, and they'll come clamoring back as long as his new song isn't, I don't know, high garbage. Did anyone listen to the well, song? I did. And? It's sleepy time music, unfortunately. At least it lives up to its billing. I ain't mad. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I did see an Instagram picture of him with Timbaland in the studio, so who knows? That might win me over, but right now it sounds sort of just like the ordinary, you know, ballad with, you know, the choir background. It's, I mean, it's Sam Smith. It's nothing out of the ordinary from what we've already heard. But, hey, people love it, so shout out to Sam Smith, the king of blue-eyed soul. Oh, Stop geez. it. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get into the main discussion, Tom, I was just telling Ed last week, um, a little bit before we finished off the podcast, I, I was ready to go see Mariah Carey. So I'd like to take this time to give uh, my insight to the concert itself. Okay. Um well, first of all, I'm a huge Mariah fan, so let's just put that out there. And I think, for the most part, she was live singing. The singing was okay. I don't think it was great by any stretch, but it was okay. At least she was singing. And when I went into that concert, I said, as long as she's not lip singing the entire time, I'll get my money's worth. So for anybody that wants to go watch Mariah Carey, she's sort of live singing, so you should definitely go watch it. Okay. Well, I, well, I, okay, that's a plus, I guess. She's saying at her concert. This is where, how far we've gotten. Well, there's another tour that's happening right now, and that's Janet Jackson's uh, State of the World tour. Um, I, apparently, she's live singing as well because she's another one that usually lip syncs. But uh, they're they're saying that she sings live on on this tour. Yeah, word around the Twitters. Of course, I haven't been to the show yet, but some of our Soul and Stereo followers have kind of been talking about it over the past week. And apparently she's singing live, and apparently she's already lost her baby weight, and she looks like 1993 Janet and is destroying it on stage. So I don't know if that's standing or if that's real talk, but if it's true, (laughs) props to her. (laughs) And, Ed, do you remember, um, because I'm looking at her set list right now, she's actually performing album cuts from, like, albums that – I guess no one really... Like, she's not just performing the big hits. Remember the song, um, Spending Time With You? I think it was was on Demita Joe. That was Demita Joe. Yeah, I like that song. Yeah, she actually sings that on the uh, tour. So I might have to pay money for that one. Demita Joe is such an underrated album. I know it was one of those ones that got a whole bunch of hype and people were like, eh. But if you go back and listen to it, I think most people would enjoy it. It's pretty good. Most of her later albums get a lot of slack, but they're pretty solid. So she's doing a tour and performing songs that no one ever heard before? Well, probably, like a good... 
If you pay well, Tom, $1,500. The album sold like a million. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. The album, the album did go platinum. <laughs> People want to hear the hits, man. They don't want to hear these deep cuts. You know, I want to hear the deep cut. <laughs> no, we do. We'd love to. I'm we just do. saying. It might, it might be crickets going on during that performance. I'm just saying. No, I mean, you're probably right. But that's why they just follow it up with some long time hit. She'll hit Rhythm Nation after that, and everybody will wake up. So it's cool. Yep. All right, Tom. So you've been hyping up this new feature for the past week. What is this new feature that Hold you Hold on. First of all, you didn't even touch on a piece of new music that's coming out. One of Ed's favorite artists of that. Music Soul Child is releasing a double album oh. this coming Friday. Uh, see, this Ed. is what happens when Tom misses a week. We talk all about the very long Music Soul Child album that will be gracing our ears in just, I guess, four or five days by the time this goes up. The disrespect shown on this podcast of Music Soul Child is just an abomination. I can't oh believe it. Oh, my God. <laughs> You yes, you should have you missed last week when I gave props to one song and didn't give props to the other song. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Mr. Leo, on this Humble, Humble Pie. Pie single? What I wasn't there to, to defend it, so it doesn't count. That, that's fake props, man. And let well, I hear you give, now. <laughs> I want to hear you giving props while I'm standing here. This 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 dude backpedals like the guy on Paper More video game on NES. Listen, player. See, the, what, what's the song, Kyle? Sooner or later, that joint went yeah. off. So I'll give you props for that. Wow. Wow. But Humble Pie, no, you got to put that pie back in the oven. That did not do it for oh. me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Uh, it's a little undone. Put it in there for 15, 20 more minutes, and then maybe it'll set better on my palate. Listen, man, after I introduce this new feature and it's over and done with, you're going to be eating some humble pie. I can't no, wait. Oh, please. Oh, bring, please are you, bring this on. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. I didn't. Yeah. All right. So so the listeners, I didn't tell Kyle and Ed what, what this feature was. It's interactive. I want everyone who's listening to follow along and play along. So we had an R&B draft last year. Now what we're going to do is a song draft. I'm going to name an artist. You guys have 10 seconds to name the best song by that artist. The catch is, Gosh. the catch is, whoever goes first, they pick a song. The second person can't pick the same song. Okay. All right. And we're I'm just going to go, it's going to be like rapid fire. I picked so a list best. of artists. So we're picking best song, not our favorite, like best. Yes, the best song by that artist. Okay. And you have to do it like quick. Ten seconds. If you don't do ten seconds, you're out. Well, it's gonna. If it's ten seconds, it's got to be like the first song that pops in your head. That's the fun yeah. part. <laughs> that's the fun part about it. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. Real quick. And there's no explanations needed. There's no debating. Nope. We're just gonna go. We can we can diss each other, but we can't. There's no debating. Oh, we're dissing each other like that. <laughs> you don't have to put that in there. All right, so who's first? Who's going to go first? Ed, you're first. What? Who's going to so go Ed, first? Ed goes first. <laughs> so Ed is going to go. I'm going to name an artist. Ed, you're going to go first. Kyle, mm-hmm. you're going to go second. And I'll go okay. third. And that's what we're going to do. Even you though this have, is cheating since you already know what the artists are. No, I, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about anything. I just made uh, a quick list. At least right. you finally admit you don't think about anything. Oh, my goodness. Get that um, humble pie ready, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready? Yep. Yes. All right, the first artist is Aaliyah. Uh, are you that somebody? Oh, he stole my song. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> One in a million. All right, see, that was good. No one failed. Ready for the next one? Oh, I mean, how are you going to get that wrong? What did you pick that song from Fantasia? Like, not Fantasia, Anastasia. Like, yes, you get mess this up. Uh, you could get nervous and make a bad pick. That's the fun part. But, all right, let's okay. keep going. Ready? So, I'm going first again? Yes, you're first every time. Okay. Jodeci. Oh. 
Ah, come and talk to me. I'm going with Phoenix. I'm going with... Not oh, crap. What? Uh... Uh... You took... You both took mine. Can we flow? Wait, Wait a minute, what did you say? Wait, what did you say? <laughs> I said, I said, can we flow? I got nervous. No. Yeah. Oh. Wow. You both took mine. I'm last. That's the hard part. Oh, please. We just talked like, about... No. We just, Why did we just talked about no one caring you? about the album cuts. But yeah, I, I got nervous. I couldn't think of something. <laughs> wow. Nobody said it's freaking you? That was, I, I was like going between those two. All right. Back to... Back to ready? Mary right. J. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Uh, Best Mary J song? I was saying I'm going down, but that's probably not what it might. That's far from my favorite. I am going with Share My World. Oh, that's a good one, player. I'm, I'm going with My Life. I have to. Oh, okay. I'll take the L on this one because y'all had better ones. No, that was, that's, this was a good one. We all did good. kind of too... That sounds kind of too slow for my liking. It's very depressing, in fact. But no, it's but a good I song. love it. It's a good song. I mean, I could have picked 20 of her songs. All right, ready? Glow up. Glow up. No, not that song. <laughs> ready for the next one? Yes. Yep. Robin Thick. Lost Without You. If anybody picks anything else, you're wrong. Oh, man. Well, I have no choice now. Um... Um, sex therapy. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a- oh, no. I got nervous. I got no. nervous. No. I guess I'll go with uh, Magic. I don't know. Oh, that's No, all of those songs are great. You're good. Sex therapy is not great. Are you kidding me? Sex therapy is my song. First of all, get what? it together. Yes, that's a great song. Are your eardrums broken? Well. I have never heard beef with sex therapy. Who would ever like that song? No. Ed, no. Don't, Ed, don't mind Tom. I think once upon a time he tried using the line, uh, I'll bite your neck like Twilight on a girl and she turned him down. <laughs> what? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now it makes sense. Moving on. Moving along. <laughs> Are we ready? Mariah yeah. Carey. Oh, oh. no. Ed, do not pick my song. Don't pick my song, either of you. I don't know what song you're picking. I'm not Professor X. Um, <laughs> uh, we belong together, even though that's wrong. Oh, man. And there we have it. Always Be My Baby. Oh, you took remix, mine. Remix and the original. Well, I'm yeah. going to take, since you both you took my song, Kyle, I'm going with the Roof remix. Oh, now that's what I wanted to say, but we're picking best songs. And I that's not her that. best song, though. I, I just, it's 10 seconds. Who can think of it? Yeah, yeah right that's it. the first thing that jumped in my head, too. So props to you and your mommy's <clears throat> love. I'll give NYC some love today. All right, good. All right, we're going next with Alicia Keys. Uh, <sighs> Diary is her best song. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh why did you do that? <laughs> Because Why did you do that? The correct answer. <laughs> uh, a woman's work. Oh man, girlfriend. Oh, I was like, if anybody picks Fallen, I'm yelling at you. Oh, I hate that song. <laughs> All right, next, Joe. Hmm, the love scene. Good song. Wow. I'm going to have to go with All That I Am. Wow. I'm impressed. That's a good song, but I'm impressed you picked it. And I'm going to go with All the Things Your Man Won't Do. Oh, I forgot about that one. Wow, that album, no. got all, one album got all three songs. That's I was going to say, this goes back to the point that I made. It may have been the last podcast that, like, that is Joe's signature album. You can't tell that me. Proves it. That proves it right there. 
And we didn't right. even get on some of the album cuts. Woo. Next up, this is going to be a tough one. Okay. Janet Jackson. Uh-uh. This, uh. <laughs> <sighs> this is another one I could pick 17, but I'll do I Get Lonely. That's probably just my favorite. Wow. It's not her best. Oh, man. From that same album, I'm going to go with Go Deep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm going to go with... That remix. I'm going to go with Let's Wait a While. That's... Uh, man, I could have picked, like, 20 more songs. This is hard, That's man. Cuts. No one said this would be easy. No, I will. I'll agree. I'll agree. <clears throat> All right. I can't wait to see what some of our listeners pick, because I know they're going to have some joints. Yeah, please, if you're listening, sound off in the comments on what you picked. This is interesting. Yep. All right, Genuine. <sighs> See, I know what everybody's going to pick, but I want to pick. No. Ah, this is another one that's like too many choices. Uh... I'm going to do the Only When You're Lonely remix just to be different. Oh, what? But, his best? Wow. Wow. Pony? That's, no, that's, pony. that's pony. one of his best. <laughs> pony. Say pony. That's pony crazy. is a cop-out. <laughs> oh, Ready yeah, for, exactly. I'm going with I'll Do Anything, I'm Sorry. Oh, my goodness, yes. That should have been my answer. Yes, even though I love same old G. But. That's, yeah, I, that, that flew through my head, too, but I should have picked. I think Tom got this one. All right, Ed, another of your favorite... Ready for this? Another of your favorite artists, Ed? Okay. Ash- Ashanti. Oh, oh yes. my God. <laughs> Her best song? Yes. It's like saying, what's the best can of ravioli you've ever eaten? Oh, my God. Come on, Ed. Ed? Stick uh, <laughs> to your humble pie. <laughs> Calm down. Leave ravioli oh. out of this. Uh, there's only like two it could be, so I'll just do foolish and get it over with. Now let me get into my uh my stand moment and tell oh, everyone God. about the great time out, hold on. There's this great song on Concrete Rose, her third album. What? I think it's like track four it's uh, it's track fourteen, if I remember correctly. I know the album from top to bottom. The song is about three minutes and thirty three seconds long. The song is called <laughs> Don't Leave Me. Don't leave me alone. That is oh, a oh. best song. Listen, listen, Kyle. Ed, 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 let me take this one. Let me take this. Okay, one. Kyle. If you have to explain the song to people, then you're not. You're losing. You're not winning on that one. I, I didn't just. I didn't he, explain well, it. I was just telling when you said the great you had, album Concrete Road. You had to tell them where to find it. Listen, I knew the length of the song, and people need to know that because no one's <laughs> listening to a song. No one listens to a song longer than four minutes these days, so I had That's to break true. it down and say it was only three minutes. Oh <laughs> All right, I'll go with Rock With You, yeah, that, I guess. It's, no, it's only Foolish and Rock With You, but I will give Kyle credit. Concrete Rolls has literally two songs on it, and that Don't Leave Me Alone is the second song. That and only you. That's it. All right, R. Kelly is next. Oh my gosh! Like this dude has four thousand songs. Uh, I mean, I can be cornball, but I don't want to be cornball. I'll be cornball. I believe I can fly. Oof. Oh. Um. First thing that popped in my head for you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, that song with Carrie Hilson, Number One Sex, only because in the beginning, our, uh, Carrie Hilson says, Our Carrie Baby, and I thought that was like the coolest thing ever when I was 18. Wow. You impressed very easily. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Bump and Grind, then I was going to say Ignition Remix, but I'm going to go with Only the Loot Can Make Me Happy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> What? That's the most random <laughs> kick on the podcast so far. Yes, that's where we're going. All right. Oh, oh my gosh. Beyonce. And I immediately heard the booze from the comment section the second you mentioned her name. 
We love Beyonce. What are you talking about? No, I <laughs> agree with you. I said the comment section. <laughs> no one li- dislikes Beyonce, do they? Oh, let me introduce you to so many of my friends. Okay. They despise yeah. her. But anyway, yeah. her best song to me is I Miss You off of the four album. Actually, the best song by Beyonce is Love on Top off the four album. Wow. I'm going to go with Dangerously in Love Part 2. I do like that song. It's very right. underrated. You're, pick a, you're picking a Destiny's Child song as the Beyonce song? She co-opted Wait, it on her album. It's fine. I it's on a Destiny's Child album. <laughs> part 2? Part Yeah. He's... Ignore him. It was on the Destiny Child album first, but it's on her oh. little album. Who knew? Uh, Kyle next up, Kyle. Next up is the most celebrated artist of our podcast, Usher. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you act no, like I mean, he's got no good songs. Jeez. No, he's got good songs. You just said his name, then my, my groin started itching. But... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not bad diseases, so let's go with uh, I don't want to do that song. See the thing that makes it hard is the first thing that pops in my head I don't want to do. So I pull back. But it just popped in my head first, so I gotta go with it. You got it bad. Mm. Oh now I'm lost. Um I'm going to have to go with the carbon copy of You Got It Bad, which is Burn. I'm going to go with You Don't Have to Call. That's what I thought Kyle was going to go with, to be honest. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, I surprised you guys. No, please. You surprise me every day in very bad ways. Next up is Kyle's actual favorite artist, Brandy. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> oh, damn. Please. Angel in disguise. Wow. Ooh, that's a good pick. All right, so um, it's hard to pick just one, so I'm just going to name the best song off each album, if I may. Oh, my, oh, my goodness. Pick one song, player. How do you forget the rules that quickly? Hold on, hold on. So on the debut, it's got to be I Want to Be Down. On second one, it has to be Angel in Disguise, but since you took it, we're going to have to go with uh, Put That on Everything. Uh, on the Full Moon album, I mean, that's the best album of the 2000s, apparently. I'm going to go with When You Touch Me. On the Afro DJX album, which, Ed, you got to put some respect on that album because, <laughs> listen, it's got to be I Tried. On the Human album, um... I didn't really like this album, but um, <laughs> nobody let's, did. Let's, let's just stop there. Um, so the best Brandy album, I mean the best best Brandy song, I will put. Uh, I'll put "When You Touch Me." That is the best Brandy song. Why really? did you pick her last album? Did wow. you ignore that one. Two Eleven. Yes. Yeah. Well, I did like that album, but everyone started throwing it out as a classic. So I don't want to touch on that album right now. Wow. It's not a classic. Brandy Stan standing. I am so shocked. I guess I'll go with Full Moon. But that seems like a cop out. But that's where I'm going. No, Wait. not a cop Tom, out you gotta, you got to let them know the fun fact. Didn't you listen to that song like nine times in a row? I did, actually. After I found out the history of it. When Mike said he told me the story of how he created it. Good song. And that made you listen to it nine times in a row? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you got to tell this story because I don't know this story. Uh, this is like five or six years ago. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm old, man. I don't have a good memory. Oh. Anyway, we're moving on. This is rapid fire. And besides, well, I want to touch on... That. I want to touch on Kyle's second favorite artist, John Legend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, John Legend, Green Light. Ew. What's wrong with Green Light? Yeah. 
it wasn't very good. Well, let me hear your two sleepy picks so I can fall asleep for your <laughs> Sunday morning um, bedtime stories because that's about all he's got going for. All right. Wow. John Legend's best song. Well, on a side note, have you guys ever, like, plugged in your headphones into, like, your MP3 player or your phone but didn't plug it all the way in so you only hear, like, half of the track or you only hear, like, one side of the headphones? You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't, but this is a very cow thing, so I'm going with it. So I'm going to go with Quickly by Brandy with the headphone only half plugged in so that you only hear a brand Oh, part. man. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh man! Please, I, now this is the one time that I want you to get roasted by the comments because that was oh, oh. But on the real, I, I guess I would have to go with uh, "Let's Get Lifted." Yeah, it's alright. Uh, really? He doesn't have much. I'm sorry. I'm going with "Save Room." Yeah, that's what I figured. I don't know why you love that song so much. Great song, guys. Uh huh. Tuck in, mom. You don't even acknowledge that second album. That that hurts me, man. It's because it's we'll put you in a coma. The album is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna, we're we're gonna wrap this. Him. We're wrapping this up. Two more to go. Okay. Ready? Monica. Monica, Monica. Uh, I got to go with, and I don't know if this is her best, but I got to show it love. This is one of my favorite songs of all time. Wait a minute, this just flew out of my head. I was going to say knock, knock, but that's not the song. <laughs> what is the, oh my, why can't I think of the song? The song where she raps in the middle. What's the name of it? So Gone. Thank you. Thank you for helping the senior citizen remember the song. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wanted to call it Rowdy Chick, but that's just the rap. Rowdy Chick? Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's stuff that she says in the song. All right, all right. Um, I will say the best Monica song is Before You Walk Out of My Life. Oh, you Ooh. just took mine. You that just was, took mine. Yeah, that would have been my number two. Since you took that, I'm going to have to go with uh, Angel of Mine. All right. Wow. That's a very untom pick. Well, you made me nervous. So you took mine. I made just... him nervous? Oh, my God. <laughs> we have 10 seconds here. Well, Kyle killed a 10-second concept with his 10-minute brandy speech. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, and the final one is, let's see who we got. I'll go with Neo. Hmm, Neo. <sighs> you know who that is, that? I think I've heard him a couple times. We tweeted. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, that was at E.T. Bowser. We love you, Neil. <laughs> my God, look at these fuck up. Um, first thing that popped in my head was Go On, Girl, for some reason. I don't know why. Great song. Oh, Great song. Mine. You stole mine. Oh. That was your song, too? Damn. That was my song. Wow. Listen, I went through some hard times a couple like a year ago, and that was the song I had to listen to to make myself feel better. Great song. Oh. oh. Poor, poor Kyle. Poor Kyle. Now I'm lost. Um, I will have to go with, I want to say, because of you, because that took my pick. I'm going to pick oh. your other, go ahead, Ed. I like that song, but it's that's one of those songs that I love, but I just got so sick of that now when I it comes on my on my little MP3, I'm like, eh, next. It's a good song though. What about your other song, Kyle? Let go. That's also a very sad song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with actually when you're mad. Oh, okay. So wow. that was a very well written song. Neil's pen. I mean, we've talked about it before, but. So that, ra- doing it. that wraps up the feature. What did you guys think? That was very entertaining. I hope everyone who's listening finds it entertaining too and made some picks themselves. So we'll see. Yep. 
Um, well, we're going to have to eventually do an R&B draft anyway, so maybe we'll just steal this idea and use it for, like, five other people, but we'll see. If you actually had time to think about each one, I think you could, like, actually come up with some best songs. Oh, for each definitely. person. And yep. make it, like, a real, you know. You can make a, a very solid draft with that. But the fun part of this was just the first thing that come to your head. So yeah. that's why I end up saying freaking knock, knock for Monocle or whatever. <laughs> it just came out of my mouth. <laughs> I mean, I saw on another website, Ed, you posted it. Someone ranked, like, all 300 Jay-Z songs. Oh, my gosh, yes. And quite a few people sent that my way and was like, you should have done this. No, I shouldn't have. It took me long enough to do 30. Doing 275 Jay Z songs, I'm good, player. <laughs> I'm a married man. <laughs> hey, do you think there's anyone yeah, we can yeah. do that realistically for R and D? Like, I'm thinking like Mary, but I can't even imagine ranking every Mary J. Blige song. Like How every possible? single song, like that's incredible. I've for the longest wanted to do like this gigantic list of 90s R&B albums, but, because I mean, there's no way I could limit that to 30, because I could, that would be leaving out too much heat. But well, even but, if I did 50 or 100, geez, like this, people don't realize the amount of time it takes to not only research, but to rank and then write all that stuff up. So props to whoever wrote that Vulture list, because I saw it and was like, you are a better man than me, brother. Well, listen, man. Let me ask you something. Like, is this a Mary J? I mean, I, obviously, like, the top 50 I could see, realistically. But when you're at, like, number 171 versus 172, how do you really differentiate? I mean, I just can't and, see that. And, no, and that's a good point, too, because, really, like, if you look at the Jay-Z list, like, everything under, like, 111, like, you know, like, what? <laughs> you arguing over the placement of 132 and 130? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. It's great in concept, but yeah, it gets a little monotonous. Yeah. Yep. So let's quickly get into the Hall of Fame now. Tom, you only you weren't here last week, but we actually did a Hall of Fame. Um, we'll let you put your input into it, and then we'll just do one because I know we're running short on time. Uh, Ed will pick the last one. But last week we nominated Anita Baker. Is she in or out, Tom? Listen, man. What year was Anita Baker's last hit song? Just someone could fill me in real quick. Oh my God! Here no, I'm just asking. I'm just asking a valid question. I mean, it was probably mid '90s. We're talking about hit, hit, not like the the Tyrese cover from a couple of years ago that did I, right, but like hit, hit, probably mid '90s. Listen, guys, I'm 34 years old. I'm not, you know, 55. How am I supposed to comment on this? Oh my gosh! She was dropping songs the same time Brandy was Monica was singing "Before You Walked Out of My Life." You know that song? <laughs> it was the same year. I mean, her best terrible. album was in like 1982. I wasn't even born yet. I'm just saying. My first album came out in 1979, man. I was not even a thought in some in my parents' head yet. All right. <laughs> I am right. trying so hard not to slip into a coma in this podcast, and it ain't working. Meanwhile, that new music right. soul out, guys. That album's going to be fire. Oh, my. Oh. Speaking of putting me in a coma, <laughs> somebody sent some <laughs> smelling salts in a search party in a few days when I have to sit down and review all 40 tracks of that thing. Oh, my goodness. What are we talking about again? We weren't I need talking a baker. About music soul child I know. I'm just, I'm just messing with you guys. Uh, all right. But in all seriousness, I, I, I've really never listened to a Nina Baker album, so I can't really comment on that. What did you say, Kyle? I don't remember. But we'll move he on. Said, uh -huh. Yes, he was <laughs> on the right side of history for once. Okay. All right. The next person uh, we nominated was my boy Kevin Campbell. Tom? No, he's out. He's someone who, you know, he he peaked early and had a, a great start, but, like, just then just kind of fell off way too quick and then disappeared. You know, it would have been nice to see, like, consistency over the years up until now, but realistically I can't see putting him in. Yeah, and we, we, we both agree. Yeah. 
We said that as well. So um, we're on to this week's Hall of Fame. Ed, the floor is yours. Who are we nominating? Well, once again, we're going top of mind here, and I can't explain my train of thought from Anita Baker to Tevin Campbell to this person because unraveling my mind will take many scientists, those dudes from Egypt with those, like, weird abacuses and stuff because the that level of deepness is just a little bit too much for the podcast. Anyway, my nomination is an artist that the Internet loves, and he all right, but I want to see what we think about it as a unit. Frank Ocean. Oh, no. Wait, what? <laughs> is this a oh, joke? No. Frank Ocean. Is this Frank a joke? Ocean. How could you nominate mean? someone? No, you can't. No, you're not allowed to even speak on it. You're not allowed. <laughs> He's out. Let me speak on it and make my case. <laughs> Frank Ocean is, for better or worse, has been, because of his Channel Orange album, I guess that was 2012 or so, has been kind of the figurehead for mainstream R&B for the past five or six years, which caused the hype for his album last year to be so freaking insane because people were going crazy waiting for this thing like it was the R&B version of Detox. And once it came, it was solid. And the, the Channel Orange album is pretty okay. But I think a lot of his album and his success is, even though well done, I feel like a lot of the mystique of Frank Ocean is a little deeper than the actual output. So even though I love him, I do think he's a little overhyped. So although I have heard some conversations about him being Hall of Fame worthy and the best R&B artist of this generation and blah, 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 thanks to his most recent album, it's barely even R&B anymore. I'm just saying no for Mr. Frank Ocean. And I'm sure you two would agree with me. I'm going to go with no as well. You know what the thing is? I think his mystique, it's gone too far. It's gone to the point where I don't even care about him anymore. Um, as far as the music itself, I remember, because I'm from that generation, I remember when everyone was on the Frank Ocean bandwagon, when he was so posting all I. his songs on... He was posting all these songs on Tumblr. Um, I think accidentally ruined Bridget Kelly's career by releasing his demo version of Thinking About Forever. Um, I, I never aside, knew this story. Huh. That's why Tom holds a grudge against Frank Ocean. Right, Tom? There's more reasons that, than that, but continue on. Oh, my gosh. Anywho, um, like I said, I'll say no, but here's an interesting fact. And, Tom, you'll love this. I've seen a lot of people compare Music Soul Child's vo uh, vocals or Frank Ocean's vocals to Music Soul Child's. I'm not sure if you agree or not on this, but <laughs> this is actually I true. I want to agree just so I can put Tom in his grave. Oh, yep. man. And, um, and you love that song, Slide, so uh, I'm going to say no, but I'm going to leave it to you, Tom. All right. <laughs> Uh, is this thing on? You guys hear me? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> the first reason I started hating Frank Ocean was when he started beefing with the Eagles and Don Henley. And he basically what? just what? took a took a crap on them after sampling their music and acting like it was this nothing. This happened? I missed this. this. No, this, perfect... this, this did happen. Yep. Yep. Beefing with the Eagles? Yeah. They go re do your Wikipedia research, man. He was so arrogant about it, too. He basically said, like, he made their music better than it already was or something like that. What? Okay, yeah. now I got beef. Second of all, second of all, do you even hear the music that's coming out of his mouth? He can't even sing. It's off key. I mean, do you not hear that? No, I hear that. Well, I hear that it's in the live performances. On the albums, he's okay. But on live, oh, he's a hot mess. Okay. Well, that's number two. Number three, not even counting the Bridget Kelly thing, but remember how I tried to put some people in the Hall of Fame because they're a good guy? Well, he's not a good guy, so he's out. <laughs> I but, can't argue with wait. that. He is not a good guy. <laughs> and he did, fight with, he did fight with Chris Brown once, so... Oh, that's Chris enough Brown's for me to put him good. in there. Chris Brown's a pretty why good guy. Wait, Ed, why don't you think he's a good guy? 
Who? Chris Brown? Frank, Frank Ocean. Oh, I was about to say, um, did you just wake up? But, um, <laughs> no, Frank Ocean's a piece of garbage even before <laughs> the ego thing. Like, that's not to be argued. He's very cocky about his place, and he's an artist that talks a big game, but when yeah. it's time to step up, like with that live performance, he sounds terrible, and it makes excuses. So, like, that I give no – you get no props from me for that. However, I won't say that he, like, puts out garbage because Channel Orange was good. I like Blonde as a pop album. I like Blonde. I did not like it as an R&B album because it really wasn't an R&B. His music is fine, but he's just a little overrated, and I think he overestimates his worth. So, no, I'm be, not a fan yes. of his persona. That – I mean, the moment when he just pretty much dissed the Grammys and be like, yeah, I'm too good for the Grammys. I'm not even going to submit my album or whatever. I don't know what happened, but that's not cool. Even though we don't respect the Grammy selections, I mean, that wasn't cool. That's just no, such arrogance. That's what annoys me the most about him, and that's kind of true. And I didn't know about his Eagle thing or the Bridget Kelly thing, so y'all put me on. Yeah. So Frank Ocean will not be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was pretty apparent. We finally agreed on something. Fair enough. So that will conclude this week's episode of the podcast. Tom, like I was telling Ed, next week we gotta we gotta get on that R and B draft again. It's almost that time, but we're gonna have to coordinate and schedule that at a later date. But until then, Ed, what's going on with SoInStereo dot com? Over on soulandstereo.com, we talked a little bit earlier about the top 30 R&B albums of the 2000s. We are now talking about the top 30 rap albums of the 2000s. So that went up last week, so we've kind of been chatting about that all week long. So check out that list if you haven't seen that. And I think it's about time for me to do another Love Letters. People have been asking, like, where are the Love Letters at? And it's been over a month, so I might have to dig into the mailbag this coming week and pop out a new version of that. And also, as we talked about a little bit earlier, new Music Soul Child album coming out. So look for a review sometime, if I can survive it, in the next few days. Awesome. And Tom, what's going on with you know I got soul.com? I've noticed you haven't really been posting a lot on the website. I think you're really gearing up for this Music Soul Child album, aren't you? I'm really trying to get mentally focused. You know, guys, i got to get in the zone. You know, be prepared. You gotta get your to pillow to ready. You gotta get your warm milk. You gotta get yep. your cap, your night quill. Okay. Ed, you're such a hater, man. Yes. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, we you just did an interview today, Kyle. Oh yeah, I did. I actually did an interview today with uh Static Major's Whittle, I guess. Um she's actually going to be releasing some music, um, you know, Static's debut album, which has been on the shelves for for about 10 years now. She's going to be releasing it soon. So there's a lot of Static major stuff happening. Um, She's actually, she actually just started up a petition to get Static's um, banner, I guess, all over Louisville. Um, Ed, do you know anything about this? I don't, but you need to send me the information. You know, I got connects there. I can help get that word spread and get the media on that. I didn't know. Yeah, from the conversation I had with um, Static's wife, she had said that uh, he was going to be up, uh, you know, on the banners last year all over the city, but instead they went with Jennifer Lawrence. So they're going to try to get Static in this year. Yeah, so. Yeah, for those who don't know, when you go to downtown Louisville, there are like these gigantic banners that hang from the skyscrapers, and it's like, in this case, it would be like Statics Louisville, and it would be a big – his face, and it's pretty cool. So I didn't know that there was actually a push for that, but I will gladly help make that push. Wait, quick question. Now, who's Jennifer Lawrence? Oh. oh. This, of course you don't know who that is. You don't watch TV or yeah, go to that's movies. True. You just go to baseball games all the time. She that's doesn't true. Play. <laughs> Boy, Lamb, dog, so you wouldn't know. Uh, okay, got it. And that second question: When are they getting? Uh, it's a petition for Bryce and Tiller out there yet? I might, do we want to start is, that one? Burning it. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Uh, so that I think is it for this week's podcast, Tom. I know you got an interview with Music Soul Child coming up. 
Oh, I believe actually Sammy's album is coming out next week as well, if I remember oh. correctly. I, I believe you're interviewing him, Kyle. I thought you were, but we'll talk about that off the air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it for this week's podcast. I hope everyone has a good weekend, and we will be back next week to talk some more R&B. Peace. 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 To talk some more R&B. Peace.